computational linguist. My job is to help computers understand language. So when I was first asked to give this talk, I wished my field was a little further along, so maybe a computer could give my talk instead of me, and I wouldn't have to stand here and be nervous. As you can tell from the fact that I do stand here and I'm nervous, uh, our field is not that far along. Computers cannot understand language. And that has to do with the fact that even if they did, they couldn't replace me here because oftentimes it's more important who says something than what is said. Now this might seem a little counterintuitive. After all, we all have devices in our pockets or in our homes that we can talk to. We can say, hey, what's the weather going to be like today? Or what's on my agenda this afternoon? And they respond. They talk back. So how do they not understand us? Plus, everything we think is hard about learning a language, remembering vocabulary, cramming in these weird declension tables, those are all things that are dead easy for computers. However, language is a lot more than just learning vocabulary and declension tables. Language is fundamentally a human endeavor. And no matter how much these machines learn, they cannot make up for that. So if I say something like, I went to Pittsburgh last month, and then I ask, did my head go to Pittsburgh as well? You would think that's a dumb question, because without head, it's very hard to go anywhere. But for any of these tools, that's a really difficult question to answer. They have never seen anything like that in their training data, and so it's really hard for them to tell what's going on. The thing is that language is fundamentally about ourselves. We express who we are through language in subtle and not so subtle ways, and we account for that when we encounter somebody and talk to them. So within a few sentences, you can typically tell roughly how old the person is, where they're from probably, their age, their gender, their personality, their attitude, a lot of things. But to a computer, these things are not obvious. They don't take them into account. They only pay attention to what the people say, but not who says it. And that does have an effect on understanding. So if you see a sentence like, that was a sick performance, it makes a huge difference whether that was said by a 16-year-old at a skate park or by an 86-year-old after a piano recital. And we take that meaning difference into account because when we hear something, we also listen to who says it. But computers do not, and that creates a problem. Now, this comes from mainly how we approach language right now in computers, namely as an engineering problem. And that has had a lot of success. Right now, you can log onto the internet and you can translate from Italian to English to Chinese to German to whatever language you choose, and it's actually not half bad. You can run a computer and find out which tweets are good or bad for your company. You can have a computer analyze better than any human could what the verb is in a sentence. But this all relies on recognizing patterns. We feed computers with a lot of examples and ask them to find regularities in there and then respond in a predefined way. What we've done with that is to basically take something that's beautifully complex, like language, and made it into a relatively simple, straightforward, information-theoretic measure. And like I said, that helps, and a lot of smart people have worked on making it so. But it doesn't really help us make computers understand language. The problem is that what we teach the computers stays with them for their entire life. So most of the data we give them, most of the examples we present to them, are actually pretty dated. A lot of current language technology relies on newspaper articles that were written in the 1980s. 
Very few people here probably speak like journalists from the 1980s. And that's a good thing. But that means language evolves, language changes. But not for the computers who have learned on the 1980s data. This is a bit as if you grew up in a place where you only heard dialect spoken. And then at some point you go out into the world and you meet people who don't speak dialect. You would have a hard time understanding them. And that's exactly what happens with computers. They try to match everything to newspapers from the 1980s. And more often than not, they fail. We've actually seen that computers are incredibly bad at analyzing language from people who grew up after the 80s. And they're incredibly bad at analyzing language if it's written in a slight dialect or with variations. Now, what's the problem with that? So what? Computers aren't perfect. Well, there are several problems. Computers are tools. We want to use them to actually do things. And they're ubiquitous tools. Chances are, if you've logged onto the internet today or you've pulled out your phone, you have interacted with language technology. And if that language technology doesn't really work, because the computer doesn't really understand you, then it's a broken tool. Now, if you've ever seen a left-handed friend try to use a pair of scissors made for right-handed people, you'll know that a tool that wasn't designed with you in mind is actually extremely awkward, inefficient, and potentially dangerous. Why dangerous? Well, it turns out there's a lot of left-handed speakers out in the world. And they all can't benefit from the language tools that we have today. And these tools are increasingly used in politics, in industry, to analyze new hires, to analyze business strategy, to analyze things in almost every realm of life. And if these tools aren't perfect, we risk actually leaving out a lot of left-handed speakers. The thing is that it's actually easy to address. We've shown that if you teach a computer that different people use language differently, they can perform a lot better. They can learn that the difference between how young and old people and men and women speak is actually beneficial in identifying what a text is about. Different people talk about different things in different ways. They can even learn better whether something is positive or negative. This becomes especially interesting when we look at the intersection of language and personality. We know that people who suffer from mental health conditions express them through the way they speak, consciously and subconsciously. And psychologists will pick up on that in an interview with a patient. However, psychologists cannot be with their patients all the time. They often only have 15 minutes or something like that in order to make a potentially life-changing decision for somebody. If we could develop tools that could stay with those patients and listen to them and pick up on signals that show that a depression or a suicidal uh, act is imminent, they could actually help us prevent these things. And we know that these tools exist. Computers are really good at picking up on subtle things and making a decision based on these patterns. However, all of these tools that have been developed suffer from the what, not who trap. They pay only attention to what is being said, but not who says it. And especially in this case, that makes a huge difference. We were actually able to show that if we teach a computer that men and women with, for example, depression or suicidal thoughts speak differently about it, these tools perform significantly better than tools that haven't been taught about the differences. And that makes a difference in real life. In the experiments we ran, the difference was between 120 people correctly identified for a risk of suicide or not. Only by paying attention to who says something. And that is a positive message. 
Now, we're not all the way there yet. We still have a long way to go in order to really make computers understand us. But if we actually manage to teach computers that who says something is just as important as what is said, we can actually make computers into the tools that we want, powerful tools that help us in all walks of life and that can be used equally by everybody and not just right-handed speakers. Thank you.